Hi, I'd like to welcome today Kelly Gallagher, the Vice President of Publishing Services at Bowker. Thanks so much for joining us today, Kelly. It's my pleasure. So, um, for those of, you, of us who don't know, what, what is Bowker PubTrack and, uh, and what does it do? Well, Bowker PubTrack was a, um, a product that we launched actually back in 2007 as we looked at the industry and we have tremendous amounts of data. We are not a data-starved industry. What, what we saw that was lacking, though, really was not so much information about the books, things that uh, companies like Nielsen provide in the trade market or even um, Bowker with some of its analytics for the higher education market, but what we saw lacking was really um, information about today's book consumer. So more about the consumer and, and, and with a focus on the things that they're reading, etc. Mm. And uh, speaking about the, the consumer data, what, what is the latest consumer data about ebook adoption? You know, it's really interesting. Um, there is so much discussion going on. Uh, we all seem to have a perspective and a strategy, but uh, to really understand what the consumer's doing today is, is so intriguing. Um, first off, it's, it's rapidly changing. And so in, in going out monthly with our information, what we're finding is that you know, consumers um, are, are adapting quickly. Um, one of the most more interesting things that we found is that um, the older generation uh, is, is really some of the first adopters of this technology, which is a little bit of counter to what we might think about technology. But for instance, in the first quarter of this year, um, those over the age of 50 um, grew 183% in their adoption of reading ebooks. Wow, that's amazing. And how does that um, skew male versus female? You know, um, again, uh, interestingly, that uh, if you look at books overall, um, you know, women are in the 60% range and men. Um, are, are trailing in overall reading. Men grow a little bit in ebooks because of our understanding of, of going into technology. But um, again, surprisingly, what we find is that um, it's not the precipitous drop off that we might think about as far as um, women engaging in technology. Kindle readers, for instance, over the age of 50, predominantly women. Um, and we have some clues around that, but, uh, but again, you know, um, so in some cases it parallels book publishing, and in other cases we find that it's quite different. And why do you think that sort of the older, maybe older women um, are, uh, are reading from the Kindle? Two key reasons. Um, and the first off is one that many would automatically think about, and that is adjustable type size. Um, as we all tend to get a bit older and our, 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 our uh, spectacles don't work quite as well. One of the great advantages that ebooks have is you can dial up font size for whatever you'd like. But the other thing that we found through our data that um, really even caught Amazon unaware was that um, people over the age of 55, the largest source of delivery for books for them today are book clubs. And it's, it's a natural transition, if you think about it, of a book club buyer who is, what are they used to? Automated delivery of a set amount of products that they really don't have to leave their living room for. Those books come to them. Well, a product like the Kindle, where they can download a book with relative ease, without a whole lot of complication, in 30 seconds, offers a lot of the similar attributes as a book club and provides that automated delivery where they won't necessarily um, get into a car and, and go shopping more regularly, etc. Oh, interesting. Um, and what is your data telling you about developments going forward? You know, going forward, um, interestingly, um, we also do an intent to purchase. And um, while we saw a great rush of um, uh, of those uh, of a more mature age adopting ebooks, we now see kind of this next generation coming in, and our, our data is telling us that um, the intent to purchase is now, in the next six to eight months, going to be more male dominated um, and younger. Um, the average age with the intent to purchase a device or purchase an ebook is indicating that it will be more around the 40 year old range um, and more um, male dominated than necessarily where it is today. I see. So younger is not 20s, 30s, but rather. Yeah, somewhere in that, um, you know, the median age, um, you know, would put it anywhere between high 20s to low 40s. Okay. And are, are you collecting data from mobile apps? We do as well, yes. Um, you know, mobile is, um, 
it's growing. It's not growing as fast. Uh, again, I think it's an issue of function um, versus um, the just the overall desire to, to, to read electronically. Um, as the functionality gets better, I think we'll see some increases. Um, certainly, iPhone has a very dominant position, but beyond iPhone, if you look at other, you know, BlackBerry or more traditional mobile um, technologies, um, you know, they probably only have about a 5% ebook market share today. Oh, interesting. And from your vantage point, um, looking at the data, I guess, or just generally, you've been in the industry for a while now, where do you see publishing going forward, uh, say, in the next 12 months, and then? Uh, a longer horizon, perhaps. Well, that's, that's, that's a loaded question. <laughs> you know, um, there's a lot of directions publishing is going today, which um, is is really quite a challenge. And, and that's, I think, the inherent challenge of publishing today is, you know, even two years ago when we were still talking about ebooks, you know, we had a pretty well defined um, supply chain. You know, today, um, the consumer has so many more options to acquire content, be it through a, a sophisticated subscription delivery service um, such as Daylit and, and, and those types of tools, um, or through eBooks, um, or through through other ways of, of acquiring content. It's a real challenge for us to define that. And so, you know, where do I see publishing going in the next year? Um, I think it's 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 going in in many multiple directions, and that becomes our, our greatest challenge. You know, the internet. You know, our estimates are that it is um, one of the largest, if not the largest, single point of distribution. You have large chain bookstores that are trying to reassess their whole value proposition. Um, Barnes and Noble getting into the device world. Um, there's this kind of blurring of um, the roles. Um, you have several large publishers that are make, taking a much more dominant role in um, becoming potentially a retailer by selling direct on their sites. And so I think it's, um, it's really a time of, of flux uh, for publishers, retailers, etc. to really assess who they want to be and where they're going with their strategies. So tough question that I don't have just yeah, a, a single sure. answer for. And I, I guess a last question about the, the consumer data, which is where you've been focusing on. How do you how do you go about collecting the data, and how, how does that that work? Do you reevaluate data? Sure. Uh, periodically? So, um, you know, one of the things we you know have to stay committed to is uh, to be able to validate the data against the U.S. Census, and so we work with a company, uh, Market Tools, out of Chicago. They're one of the largest surveying companies in the country, working with the consumer packaged goods industry. Uh, etc. And so um, we go out and we collect um, over 4,000 book buyers per month. So by year end, we'll have just under about 50,000 total book buyers representing, you know, um, nearly a quarter of a million total books purchased. And so, you know, what we do is we, we balance back to the U.S. Census data, but we ask about 60 core questions of these buyers, everything from what they bought, um, matched to an ISBN all the way to how often they're online, um, you know, some psychographic questions. We really want to know the ins and outs of that buyer because, again, you know, largely it's not something we know a lot about. And so we, we really try to get an expansive uh, panel and at the same time ask them some core questions from ebooks all the way to, you know, where they like to read and, and why they like to read. And has your data on ebooks um, is it vastly different from print print books? You know, again, um, you have pockets where it's it's very similar. Other areas where it's um, and, and it makes sense why it's different. You know, today fiction has a much larger market share in ebooks today. Um, why is that? Primarily because of the reading devices. It's easier to read a fiction book, whether it's in print or in ebook, versus. Um, uh, a biographical book where you might want to do some searching and underlining. And so from a genre standpoint, the numbers can fluctuate. Uh, from others, you know, like we talked about male, female, again, some areas are very similar and, and others are different. So, you know, it just really depends on how you want to pull apart the data. And, and where you go with it from there. Great, so I guess to summarize the trend, we're going from older women to younger men, is that right? You know, um, we'll see We'll see what the data uh, 
comes through with. You know, we all know what what older or younger men's intents are and how they follow through. So, so who knows? But but again, we will have the data to know have they followed through with that. But um, no, I think we're seeing some some really exciting days here in publishing, in eBooks, and we'll just continue to follow those trends and, and see where they take us and make sure the industry is well aware of them. That's great. Well, I look forward to talking to you the next uh, next quarter or so and see uh, see where we go from there. Great. Thanks. Thank you so much, Kelly.